Hello and welcome to video lecture in sociology. Today we are discussing chapter 4 titled as culture and socialization from your textbook introducing sociology. Now as you know we have divided this chapter into four parts. So far we have discussed about what is culture, various aspects and dimensions of culture including material and non-material. We have discussed about cultural identity, ethnocentrism and cultural changes. Today we will discuss about interplay between individual and society and culture and socialization. In the first part of this chapter we discussed about what culture is. But it is important to learn how culture is carried on or lives on for generations. Within this context we will discuss about the relationship between culture and process of socialization today. Culture is a way of life and also that culture provides us identity and meaning of life and a sense of belonging. Do you know that culture, identity and socialization are related to one another? How? Let us understand this. Though we create culture, but once it is created, it is out there as an external object or as something that acts upon us. For instance, once we have created language, language gets established as a pattern. We must use specific words only to convey something to people. Say for example, if I want water, I need to use a particular word in a language or pen, book or any other thing for that matter. This means once born, culture becomes a social force that has very powerful influence upon us. Culture thus becomes a set of guidelines that we learn right from our birth. How do we learn about specific ways of our life or culture? Or how do we come to know about our language, religion, food habits, dress patterns, preferences, etc.? How do we come to know what is expected from us and what is applicable or acceptable behavior in society? How do we make sense of what is good, bad or desirable? We learn about all these things through the process of socialization. Through socialization, we internalize the culture of our society. That is, how we come to know or make sense of our society. Socialization is a process of social interaction through which people acquire a personality, a sense of social identity and acquire or understand or learn about the ways of life of their particular culture or society. The norms and values of any given society are carried on through socialization. This process connects generation with one another as every generation passes on the culture to the successive generation. It is this process of sharing and preserving culture that is done among generations. All this learning of culture happens so naturally that we tend to take it for granted. See, when a child is born, he has no idea of social institutions, language or culture or about what society he or she is born in. The infant behaves or responds to natural instincts. But gradually, biology is taken over by culture or sociology. The nature is overshadowed by the nurture. As they grow, they are taught to behave in particular ways, taught to use a particular word to express themselves, follow the practices of the family or the culture in which they are born. Although this process is very slow initially, yet gradually it trains newborns into particular culture. Over a period of time, child comes to know and understand about his or her culture. It is important to understand that socialization has two main components. One is that we internalize culture and the other is that during this process we construct our identity, both social and personal identity. Let us understand the relation between culture and identity and process of socialization. Now all of us are born in societies where there are already established existing patterns of social behavior in the form of social institutions. Social institutions are organized forms of behavior say marriage is an institution, family, language, etc. The process whereby the social practices become accepted or established way of doing things in a society is called as process of institutionalization. Together these social practices, norms and values constitute culture of a society. And socialization is the process through which people learn about culture of society, about the norms and values of their culture. They learn to conform to the acceptable forms of behavior in a society. Socialization helps us to understand or make sense of the world around us or social reality that we confront in every day. Let us discuss the concept of socialization in greater detail to understand this relationship clearly. 
socialization is a lifelong process of social experience or learning through which individuals develop their human potential and they come to know about or learn about their culture our social experiences in everyday life and interaction is the foundation or building block of our personality that is it determines how a person thinks feels or acts in a given situation for example attitude towards people from a different community or category all right often children behave the way they see their parents behaving towards these communities the norms and values may differ within a society among different families belonging to different castes religions regions or social classes they can vary according to whether one lives in a village or city or if one belongs to a tribe and among tribes to which particular tribe depending on which culture you are born in infants are taught to adopt to the ways of life and society as they grow up this learning gives them a sense of identity that they belong to a particular cultural group or a society there are different stages of socialization or stages in the process of learning and at each stage there are different agencies of socialization operating or acting upon you let us discuss about these stages and various agencies of socialization the first stage in the process of socialization is called as primary socialization now primary socialization begins at birth and carries on until the beginning of the school years in one's life or formal education primary socialization includes all the ways the newborn is molded into a social being where he learns the first few things about his language and culture most primary socialization helps one to understand or is facilitated or done by the family members her family is the main agency of socialization infants live primarily in the company of their family members these people are also called as significant others who constitute the primary group in which an infant is interacting most part of interaction happens within these significant others since family forms vary widely so is the process of socialization while in the nuclear family the infant interacts mainly with limited number of people like parents or brothers and sisters or siblings but in joint families there are many more members who play an active role in the process of socialization like grandparents uncles cousins etc so during primary socialization children pick up the ways of behavior typical of their parents or the other members close to them the second stage is called as secondary socialization now secondary socialization occurs or begins at the age of 4 or 5 when a child starts going to the school and comes in contact with non family members in this stage along with primary agency of socialization that is the family other agencies of socialization also get involved or start operating these agencies are schools and peer groups but interestingly socialization is not a linear process that goes in sequence one stage after another we do not see end of role of one agency of socialization at one stage and then from there the next agency of socialization comes into picture it is a continuous and ongoing process where role of a particular agency may be comparatively less but never ceases to exist for example during the primary socialization family is the main source of socialization or main agencies of socialization during secondary socialization schools become the main agency of socialization but that does not mean the role of family stops or goes off the screen along with other agencies of socialization family continues to teach you about your culture so as you grow old a number of agents or agencies of socialization are working on you and influence your behavior now in secondary socialization schools teach you academic skills about reading writing along with your family school is a formal institution where you learn about specific subjects that cannot be taught at home in a systematic manner like science maths geography etc along with formal curriculum schools socialize you into adulthood and in different forms of social behavior It is in the schools that we learn about punctuality, discipline, cooperation, team efforts, formal rules and explore our interest in other areas like sports, music, arts etc. Here we also learn about how good work is rewarded and bad work is punished. This is a subtle way of learning and sociologists call it as hidden curriculum which means conditioning a child's capacity to learn about social life. 
During these years, particularly, peer groups play a very important role in process of socialization. What are peer groups? Peer groups are groups of friends a child has belonging to the same age bracket. Children spend a lot of time with their friends and also learn a lot about life around them through your friends. Unlike in family where a child is protected and pampered among peers or friends, a child learns the rule of competition among equals and develops his personality. Among friends, there is a great amount of reciprocity or give and take relationship rather than dependence that happens in family. The friends have a great deal of influence on one's personality and attitude for the lifetime at times. This influence can be both good or bad. For example, a child may learn to respect and behave well with elders in the company of his friends who come from a joint family. Or he may also be forced to smoke if others do in the group so as to be accepted as part of the group. Interestingly, mass media over the years has emerged an important agency of socialization. It has become an essential part of our everyday life. The impact of mass media upon young people is immense. These days, they learn about social behavior more from TV rather than from family or friends. The role models on TV are followed more as compared to rules of behavior in the family. Media has a wide reach and can influence people across geographies and regions. Children at very young age get influenced by dressing patterns, hairstyles, speech and dialogues of the character they watch on TV. They imitate them and demand for the same kind of things that their role models are consuming or as the characters do on TV. Children, especially at the age of 5 and 6, watch a lot of cartoon shows and even try to imitate the voice and style of characters they like most. But this influence has also become a source of tension or worry among people. Because there are a large number of instances that link aggressive behavior among children with on-screen violence. Learning by imitation is a method people use frequently and children too follow it. In an attempt to imitate Shaktiman, many children dived down from buildings and met fatal accidents. The interpretation of media content is dependent upon an individual. It is a one-way viewing and the impact is also one way. Children do not understand the difference between the real and the image shown on the TV. Now the third stage of socialization is called as tertiary socialization or adult socialization. This level of socialization includes learning at universities, colleges, professionalization as at workplace, entering into marriage, having family and other significant relationships and also a wide variety of roles and responsibilities. Adult socialization occurs as we assume adult roles such as of an employee, employer, husband, wife, father, mother, guardian, etc. Although in this stage there is no formal curriculum as in the school, but we learn more about social roles and responsibilities which we carry out ourselves now. As people grow, they face a lot of changes in and around themselves. In each stage of socialization, people find themselves adapting to new roles, new expectations and a new set of limitations. Individuals here learn about social expectations and about life. They refine their behavior and tend to understand their responsibilities in greater depth. Say at workplace, we learn about other cultures during our interaction with people belonging to other cultural communities. We learn to be sensible and accommodating with cultural diversities. How socialization molds us into cultural beings and gives us an identity can be best understood by looking at gender roles and expectations. Since childhood, societies mold children into respective genders. This is called as gendered socialization. What is this? Both girls and boys are taught roles, set of responsibilities and expectations from their respective genders. As a result, what happens? Boys become aggressive, dominant, outgoing and demanding. Whereas girls are taught to be accommodative, submissive, passive, cultured, introvert, caring, obedient and not questioning the choices made for them. The biological differences between males and females are brought into social and cultural realms or life. Although those who are in the cities may not have experienced gender socialization, but a large number of societies world over till date raise their young ones in gendered molds, thus perpetuating gender inequality and patriarchy in society that accords unequal status to women. They do not question the social nature of gendered roles. 
that these roles and expectations are all human constructions, but they consider it natural and practice it without questioning. At this point of time, you may think that socialization understood in this fashion demands total conformity from an individual and robs you of your freedom. But this is not the case. Conflict is natural among people and it may be necessarily be always negative. Conflict between traditional practices and modern ideas leads to change and development as we have seen during the social reform movement in India. In our interaction with others also, conflict can emerge and can also have a lasting impact on our personalities. It can lead to good also, but to bad also. However, this has to be understood within the broad framework of social change. In the course of socialization, each one of us develops a sense of self-identity and the capacity to think, act and choose independently for ourselves. In sum, Though for understanding we divide the process of socialization into various stages and in terms of various agencies of socialization. But socialization is an ongoing process for everyone until you die. Let's summarize this chapter. In this chapter we have learned about culture and socialization as the title of the chapter says. We have learned what is culture, what are various dimensions of culture including material and non-material and non-material including normative and cognitive aspects. We discussed about cultural changes and how culture is emerging into specific geographical, environmental or physical conditions. We discussed about how culture is a source of identity and can also lead to conflict between different identities. In the second part of the chapter, we discussed about socialization, various stages and agencies of socialization and interrelationship between culture, socialization and identity. So this is the story about culture and socialization. Enjoy reading this chapter. Thank you.